A recent clip from Taylor Rooks interviewing Jason Tatum went viral. Rotation. Is Kyrie Irving a superstar? Yes, Kyrie is. So, okay. I, Do you I want like me to say I, what I think about you? I agree. Okay. Okay, he agrees. Kyrie's a superstar. Then, is Damian Lillard a superstar? I think that Damian has all of the superstar qualities. But it's hard to put him in it in this moment because of. Look at Jason Tatum's face. Look at Jason Tatum's face. You trying to figure out what you're going to say next. <laughs> this is why I want more context. I do want more context, but this isn't just about bashing Taylor Rooks. I don't really. If that's our take. That's our take. This isn't really about the take itself. He just like needs a little more. But obviously, like he has that in him. Needs a little more. I mean, he's got to win. He's got to get there. Like that. It To me, that's a that's some of it. So you. So like champion, I think championships matter. This obviously got Twitter in an uproar. It starts going back and forth to who's better between Kyrie and Dame. I'm seeing Kyrie everywhere. I'm seeing Dame everywhere. And then it got to the conversation of what is a superstar. And I'll say off the rip, that I'm gonna start from the jump. I'm telling you right now, I hate that phrase. I hate the word superstar. What is a superstar? Because there is no consensus amongst NBA media, amongst NBA fans, or even NBA players of what makes a superstar how many superstars there are in the league. I've seen lists where people say there's only three or four superstars. I've seen people tell me there's 12 superstars in the league. It, there's no real consensus. There's no real clear cut, this is a superstar. And I think we just need to get away with the phrase altogether. And I got some examples for you what I'm talking about where when I say it's all over the place, I mean it is really all over the place. Shout out to Dragonfly Jones for this tweet. He says, I've been watching the superstar discussion and a lot of folks who are listing household name as a requirement are vastly overestimating how many NBA players are actually household names. I think it's legit only three household names. He says, Steph, Bron, and KD. That's a hard line to draw for superstar status. And what's even crazier, I wouldn't even add KD to the household name spot. The only household names to me, if we're talking about in America, are Kevin Durant, I mean, excuse me, are LeBron James and Steph Curry. Those are the two only household names in the NBA right now. He continues to say, to prove his point even more, how that's a hard line to draw, because I was seeing a lot of people say, if you're not a household name, you're not an NBA superstar. Giannis is the best player in the world, which I would agree. I've said that plenty of times. Luka's up next, and I won't argue with someone who says he's probably near the top five. Okay. And then you probably have Jokic. Ja might be the most electrifying guy in the league. And I guarantee you, if you ask your HR lady, it's your job. She has no idea who any of those dudes are. And I completely agree. All those guys are extremely talented. Giannis is probably the best player in the league. Not probably. He is the best player in the league. And every day, NBA media tries to tell us he's not marketable or well-known or some superstar. Shout out to Xenophobia. Well, that's a conversation for another day. So, okay. All right. Maybe Superstar isn't a household name. Let's let's, let's expand it a little bit more. What is what, what, what do we get there? Continuing the conversation, shout out to my guy, Poppy Solo. He says... The funniest part about this superstar debate is that back in the day, the NBA literally had to market players into becoming superstars. Think of what the NBA was like before Magic and Bird came and basically saved the league. It wasn't marketable at all, and it came to save the league. But what's also interesting about his take here, he's talking about marketability. So is a superstar marketable, or is a superstar because of his play on the court? Which is it? Um, now, because of the internet, the line is blurred, and I think that's amazing. F it, everybody's a superstar. Once again, that's interesting because he didn't necessarily mention play on the court. He's not saying superstar as in one of the best players. He's talking about marketing ability and marketing players to the public. Another example of how many superstars are in the league. Shout out to Swiper Cam. He says, again, there are only six superstars in the NBA. So in his world, there's only six. He names LeBron, Steph, Kevin Durant, Giannis, Kawhi, Jokic. I have some issues with this list because shout out to LeBron James. Um, he put up some amazing numbers last year, but I've also heard people say, well, if you're a superstar, you're going to lead your team to the playoffs. The Lakers didn't make the playoffs. I know Lakers teams before you go crazy and get in the comments. A whole lot more went, a whole lot more went into the Lakers not making the playoffs than LeBron James. Some stuff was out of his control, injuries, yada, yada, whatever. And shout out to LeBron. He was all NBA third time. But this list of this six leaves out guys like Jason Tatum and DeMar DeRozan, who were all NBA first and second teams, respectively. Then he adds Kawhi in here. And when you haven't even seen him play all last season, so can you remain a superstar even though we haven't seen you play all year? How does that work? This is just continuing the point of there's no real consensus of what is a superstar in the NBA. Shout out to Legend Winning. He quote tweeted this clip and said, Kyrie is a superstar because he played with LeBron, but Dame never had that luxury, so he isn't a superstar, question mark, because she mentioned 
well, Kyrie's, you know, one. He's one. But let's be real, Kyrie's not winning unless LeBron James is on that team. And I know before y'all all say, well, Kyrie made that shot over Curry. Kyrie made that shot over Curry. Well, LeBron went crazy and scored. I want to say it was like 11 points in a row for them to even get them to the point where Kyrie can make that shot. Like, let's be real here. I'm not saying it wasn't just LeBron. It wasn't just Kyrie. They needed each other. But an argument definitely can be made if Dame's on that team instead of Kyrie, they could still win that championship. Shout out to Kendra Perkins. Dame Dalla has been a superstar for a minute now. Carry the hell on. Let's get Bayless. Kyrie Irving is a superstar. Damian Lillard is not. So it's clear to me that no one knows what is and isn't a superstar. Let's just get rid of the word superstar altogether. Let's just get rid of it. Let's just stop using it to rank or give tears to some of these NBA players because there's clearly no real consensus as to what is NBA superstar. And you ask, well, Hawk, what would we do instead? Because we need to find some way to distinct our best of the best. Use your all NBA teams. We have it. Just say who you think is on all NBA caliber. They even give you a way to even rank that. There's first team, second team, third team. This caps at 15 guys. It's two guards, two forwards, and a center. There's parameters to it and everything. Because the, clearly the superstar conversation, it can just steamroll out of control. And you either have two superstars in the league or like 12 superstars in the league. And clearly no one's able to agree and the conversation shifts from person to person people move the goalposts of what classifies as a superstar to fit their narrative all nba is real cut and dry to me it's real easy to distinct and see who's the better in those tiers if you first team all nba guard you a top two guard in the league if you third team all nba guard you still good but you like a top six guard in the league and then to continue my point about the whole Kyrie and Dame situation, because then it even evolved from there. And I saw so many people saying either Kyrie clears or Dame clears or saying it's not even close. When you look at these people's stats, when you look at these guys stats, when you look at their numbers, when you look at what they bring to the court, their numbers are extremely close. Their play style is very close. You can say, well, Kyrie finishes better around the rim. Well, Dame's also great at finishing, but I would say Dame's the better shooter. Well, Kyrie is slightly more efficient. I mean, yeah, Kyrie was at like 40%, Dame was at 39, but Dame shoot like three feet further back than Kyrie. Dame low-key got Steph and Trey Young range if we're keeping it real. And also this isn't supposed to just be, and this isn't just hating to Kyrie, but since he left LeBron, we had this conversation all the time. What has Kyrie really done in terms of playoffs? And who you have is the better one. Is It is what it is. I don't really care. Like I care, but I don't. But if you even look at it this way, if you look at the All-NBAs, Kyrie's three-time All-NBA, Dame is six-time All-NBA. To me, the term of superstar doesn't have any real concrete way to have a basketball conversation. It's a nuanced way. Some people call it marketability is what makes you a superstar. Some people say it's your skill on the court that makes you a superstar. And we, like we said, some people say there's six superstars like we've seen. And I've seen lists saying there's 10 superstars. I think the NBA already gives us really good ways to rank players or to tell where a player's talent or skill level is. You got your all NBA caliber players. There's a first, second, and third in there even. You got your all-star players. There's only 24 of those. And then you got starters and you got bench players. And that's no disrespect to some of the starters. And also while we're here, let's stop calling guys all-star caliber players. Because I be seeing lists and people be calling, talking about all-star caliber players, and they start rattling off like 30, 35 names. No, 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 no. It's not that many teams on all-star team. You either an all-star or you not. You either an all-star or you're not. I'm tired of this all-star caliber stuff. Now, I might be guilty of it from time to time as well, but I'm, I promise you, I'm making a more, after today, I'm making a more concerted effort to be crystal clear when it comes to where I think players are, because every day it seemed like it, you can be on the same person's Twitter page and it'd be like, well, last week they said one thing, this week they said another, and the goalposts just keep on shifting. No one has a clear-cut consensus of what an all-star or excuse me what a superstar is so let's just stop talking about it let's just stop using that word and i get it it's marketable it's it's headlines if you see x person is a superstar it's a fun word it's easier to say than oh he's all nba you know all nba sounds nerdy maybe and superstar just sounds easier to talk about in casual conversations but there's no real consensus with it and this is a perfect conversation because also, why are we even comparing Kyrie and Dame out of nowhere considering we really didn't even see those guys play last year? They both played 29 games. Why are we nitpicking over guys who are superstars and trying to rank guys and put people in the superstar conversation just period who didn't even play last season? Why? Why? And I'm not saying because they didn't play last year, they're, they're bad or they're not going to be good. But I feel like when you're ranking players and so many people will say, well, they're ranking off of just last year or they're ranking off what they saw the past year. Well, when you see them, so how are you going to rank them? 
you ranking off of stuff from a couple of years ago so if you don't take anything else away from this take away this stop using the word superstar because no one has a clear-cut definition of what a superstar is no one has a clear-cut definition of how many superstars can even be in the nba all nba has been around for a long time just use that even if it's mid-season, be like, all right, this this guy's all NBA caliber. I think this guy's gonna be this all NBA team. I think he's gonna be second team, third team, whatever. Or say say the guy's an all-star, or just say he's a really good starter. That's okay to say too. You don't gotta just throw around these words to make your favorite player sound better or, or whatever. Whatever you're doing, you don't gotta do that. Just, I mean, it, it ain't that serious, for real, for real. At the end of the day, am I all doing a lot? Did it did it hit a core piece of me? It clearly did. Because it just, the conversation will keep just swirling around in circles. The longer we use the term all-star, I mean, excuse me, the longer we use the term superstar, the conversation can always just swirl around in circles because there's no clear-cut consensus of what the qualifications are, how many people can be one, and we can just be talking about it for days. I'm out of here.